Welcome to the latest in our series of daily devotions. My name is Jeremy Hunsell, I'm one of the readers here at St John's. And may I take this opportunity of wishing you all a very happy Easter. This week in our devotions we're going to be considering some of the people most closely involved in the events of that first Easter and their responses to the risen Lord Jesus. We're going to begin this morning by considering the women who were the first people to discover that the tomb was empty, to hear that Jesus was risen and ultimately to be the first to meet the risen Lord Jesus. We know that it was Mary Magdalene who uh, went to the tomb there and that she was accompanied by Mary the mother of James and also Joanna and Salome are mentioned as being with them. The women headed to the tomb with large quantities of spices to anoint Jesus' body. Now we know that Mary Magdalene was a witness to the crucifixion and that she would have seen Jesus' body taken down from the cross and hastily laid in the tomb ahead of the start of the Passover Sabbath. Now in the pre-dawn darkness of the first day of the week, freed from the Sabbath's restrictions, Mary and the other women go to the tomb to complete the anointing of Jesus' body to give him a decent burial. The women headed for the tomb in their grief, expecting to find Jesus' dead body. It was only as they got towards the garden that Mark tells us in his account of these events that they asked each other who was going to roll the, st the stone away from the entrance to the tomb. But as they reached the garden and came to the tomb, they discovered they had no need to move the stone, for it had already been moved aside. Now we can only imagine what they must have thought as they saw the stone protecting the entrance had been rolled away. I don't know if you've ever had the misfortune to have had your car broken into. I've had it happen a few times over the years, and your heart seems to miss a beat as you first see the smashed window or that telltale pile of glass on the pavement. Your mind starts racing as you try to think what you'd left in the car and what might have been taken. So we can only begin to imagine what was going through the minds of the women as they saw the entrance to the tomb open. Given the febrile atmosphere in Jerusalem at the time, had the Jewish authorities taken Jesus' body? Or was it just common criminals who'd broken in to loot the tomb? But what they found when they reached the tomb was beyond their wildest expectations. Rather than Jesus' body lying where it had been placed on Friday evening, they were greeted by men or angels in clothes that gleamed like lightning, who told them that Jesus wasn't there but had risen, that he would go on ahead of them to Galilee as he promised he would do before his death. And then John, in his account, goes on to record that very first very special encounter between Mary and the risen Lord Jesus. As Mary stands weeping outside the tomb she looks in to see the two angels seated where Jesus' body had been. They ask her why she's crying to which she replies they've taken my Lord away and I don't know where they put him. And as she looks round Jesus is standing there but Mary doesn't recognise him in her grief. And mistaking him for the gardener she asks him if he's taken the body and if so where he he has put it so that she can go and get it. In response, Jesus simply calls her gently by name, Mary, and she realises who it is standing there calling her. The women went to do what they believed to be the right thing, to pay their final respects to Jesus by anointing his body according to the customs of the time. Instead, when they reached the tomb, they discovered the tomb was empty and Jesus' body was no longer there, not because it had been stolen, but because he had risen from the dead and was alive again. And Mary becomes the first recorded person in all eternity to meet the risen Lord Jesus. The women went in sorrow to find the dead, but were overwhelmed with joy when they found the living. And as now we don't expect the dead to rise from the grave other than in horror movies and they didn't exist in Jesus' time. Jesus had clearly told the disciples he would be killed in Jerusalem and that he would rise again after three days, but the reality of this hadn't registered with them. But utterly remarkable as the events of the early hours of that first Easter Sunday morning were, was one factor of great significance which it's easy for us to miss. For back then, women were treated as little more than chattels to be bought and sold. A woman couldn't even give evidence in a court of law. So it was utterly remarkable that the empty tomb should be first revealed, not to the disciples, but to the women, and that the first meeting with the risen Lord Jesus should be with Mary Magdalene. So as we reflect on these events, we're reminded that there is no one who is beyond God's love, whether as a result of social or cultural standing or their past life even. Jesus died so that all who believe in his redeeming work on the cross should go free. 
but like all gifts, it needs to be accepted. The challenge for each of us is, do we believe that Mary and those that we shall consider in subsequent devotions and countless more besides, met with the risen Lord Jesus, and that we too can meet with him today and know him as Lord of our lives today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us to know you as the risen, ascended, glorified Lord of our lives. And as we watch seemingly helplessly at the events unfolding around us, may we know you as the one who is the same yesterday, today and forever. And may we each know the peace of God which passes all understanding.